Okay, in, in this video, we're going to look at um, doing a seepage analysis with piezometric lines and water surfaces. So I'm going to start by drawing a slope here and then just enter the coordinates. We'll make it a, a two to one slope just for fun. We'll go at eight comma four and then maybe a two meter crest. And we'll make it symmetric. There we go, we've got our um, external boundaries drawn in here. So I'm in the program slide two. And what we'll do is go to analysis project settings and then groundwater, water surfaces is already set as the default option. So um, that's going to be the, the default when you do this and those features will be automatically um, available to you. While we're in here, let's go and set our methods I'm going to do Bishop Simplified Method, um, the Ordinary Method of Slices, and Spencer. Just so we can look at three different methods. Again, we know Ordinary and Bishop are not great, but Spencer is good. So I'm going to push OK. Now, um, what you can do is come here to Surfaces, not that, Surfaces, or Boundaries, and there's two options. You can add a water table, or you can add a piezometric line. Uh, what I'm going to do first is um, add a piezometric line, and I'm going to make it, um, let's see, the top of the levee is at a height of 8 meters, so let's put it at 7 meters. So I'm going to put it at x equals 0 and y equals 7, and then I'm just going to simply make it linear. And again, notice I'm defining it over the full width of the domain, and now we get to tell the program which materials to apply it to. I'm only using one material. I'm just going to select all. This would apply it to all the materials that are, you know, having default values, but I'm going to keep it just with one material anyway. So let's take a look at those material properties. Um, here's material one. The unit weight is 20 kilonewtons per meter cubed. Cohesion is one kPa. I'm going to make that five and make the friction angle 30 just for, for fun. And then um, here's the water parameters. So it's going to use the piezometric line one. You can actually have multiple piezometric lines for a particular domain. And that might be useful if you have different layers that are having you know, different amounts of total head. And you could specify that using these piezometric lines. And then H sub U right now is custom. You can do auto. I guess it does have here. Um, HU is calculated automatically based on the inclination of the water surface above any given point. So this is a new feature. It used to just have you specify H sub U directly. So anyway, what I was talking about in the previous lecture where it will go to the slope of the piezometric line immediately above the point to compute the um, water pressure, that's if you do auto. So let's leave it on auto. All right, and then uh, what we can do, oh, Project settings. Let's do um, let's do a right to left. Sorry, a left to right failure. This time, uh, well, let's do let's do right to left first, and then we'll try it the other way too. And um, let's see. I'm going to go um, grid search circular just for fun, and then we'll auto grid. Um, I'm not seeing the auto grid button. I know it's here. Anyway, I'll click it right there. All right, now I'm going to tell you in advance that this is this particular domain is going to have major problems. So let's uh, let's do the calculate button, and then we'll talk about what the problem with this is. Um, I'll save this as um, let's come in here. This is going to be seepage analysis. lines, water surfaces. Bet the factor of safety will be zero. Okay, so let's come here and do this calculation. And lo and behold, we have the factor of safety for that circle is 0 0.001. Now what the heck is going on? The factor of safety should be much higher than that. There's something obviously wrong here. Well, let me explain what's happening. With the piezometric line, 
if we come down to this point, say this little vertex right at the corner of the levee, the program will calculate the water pressure based on distance beneath that piezometric line. In this case, that's three meters, so the pore pressure there is approximately 30 kPa. You know, approximating the unit weight of water is 10. Um, okay, but the total stress is not going to include that water pressure. So the total stress here is zero, and the pore, and the, uh, pore pressure is 30 kPa. Therefore, the effective stress is negative 30 kPa. The soil is just blowing itself apart. So what we need to do if we're going to use piezometric lines, the problem is if a piezometric line is above the groundwater, uh, above the soil surface, then you have to put pressures, mechanical pressures, not water pressures, not pore pressures, but actual mechanical pressures on the soil to um, represent the, pr the total stress at that point so that you get the right effective stresses. So what I'm going to do is add a distributed load uh, normal to the boundary, and I'm going to make it, um, I'm just going to make it 30, sorry, 30 kPa. I'll make it constant for this boundary, like that. And then uh, I'm going to do the same thing for this ramp load, add distributed load, triangular, and we'll go from 30 and the magnitude at the second point will be zero. And now we can put a line from here to there. And now this should be stable. We should get a reasonable factor of safety. Let's do the calculation again. Then we come over here. Now we get a factor of safety of 2.133. So much better. That's a more reasonable um, result than um, without those loads in place. Uh, okay, now Let's take a look at um, project settings. Let's go the other direction, left to right. Because in this case, for this levee, we would want to know, is it going to fail going this way toward the reservoir? Is it going to go the other way? I'm betting that it's going to be more crucial going this way because the water is pushing the levee that way, right? Um, we've now added these mechanical forces to represent that fact. So it should be a little bit lower if we come over to the right side and do it um, left to right instead. And indeed it is, 1.602. So that's the critical failure surface there going now left to right. Um, okay, let's go back and see what it is without any water. So none. I'm going to take away the uh, water table, take away these forces. Delete load, delete load. Now, nothing's happening, right? I could have just deleted the piezometric line. In fact, let's do that because here, let's delete this boundary. I'm going to do an, a different kind of boundary next anyway. So here we go. We'll save it and run it. And if we come here, okay, the, actual, the factor of safety without water pressure is 1.9. If we add the seepage, we were getting 1.6 for a left to right failure, and for a right to left failure, we were getting 2.2. So what happens is that as the water seeps through the levee, it's actually increasing the strength of the soil here because you have seepage forces pushing the particles together. But as it gets down here and starts exiting the levee, uh, now you've got a destabilizing force. So the pore pressure is bigger there and it's pushing it that way. All right, let's try another kind of surface. So we've already looked at the, we did the piezometric line before, now let's do add water table. You might be wondering why do they have a piezometric line and water table? Are those the same thing? They're, they're not exactly the same and I'll explain the difference here. So I'm going to put it at 0, 07 again, go across, there we go, put it in the exact same spot as that piezo line was before, specify it for everything. Okay, now you can see one key difference already. There's a hatched region over here on the left side where the water table is above the slope. And what that hatched surface means is that the program is telling us it knows that there's a reservoir there. And so when it computes total stress, it's going to include the unit weight of water over that zone. Now we don't have to go through the hassle of drawing in those distributed loads. So once again, let me just show you, if you use the piezometric line, you have to 
put the mechanical loads because the piezo line is only used to compute pore pressure. If you do add water table, now it's going to add total stress also anytime that water table is above the, uh, the ground surface. So this analysis is ready. We can just push calculate. Yes, save it. And then we should get the same, whoops, don't do it again. We should get the same thing we had before, 1.602, right? So it worked out perfectly fine. Um, okay, now you might be wondering, why would we ever want to use a piezometric line when we have this nice water table um, feature available that will automatically fill in the reservoir? Okay, well, here's the reason. What if we had a clay layer across there, you know, like you can draw a material boundary. And let's say that we had, a, you know, this is going to be material two down here. Let's say this green layer down there was under artesian pressure. So what that means is that maybe the water level, the total head in the green layer might rise up above the uh, elevation of the ground surface on the left side. Um, here, we'll go back. To, let's delete this. Uh, here we go. Delete boundary. So now um, I'm going to show you why they have the piezometric line option, right? So let's say that we have that, whoops, that line at 0, 0,7, straight across, down here, across there. We'll assign that to material one. Now I'm going to draw another piezometric line. And it's going to be at eight meters, just for fun. This is a really unstable condition if you have this much. And I'm going to just draw it all the way across the whole domain. So this will go to also 40, comma eight. Oh, I guess that was 35. Anyway, you can draw it beyond the limits of your domain. Oh, so material two will be assigned to that piezo line. So now you can go material properties, material two, let's make it, um, we'll give it the same material strengths, five KPA and 30 degrees. Water surface is piezometric line two, and we'll use uh, one for the H sub U. So we'll just assume that the pressure in that line is from down here. Now you might be wondering how could you get that high of a pressure in this green layer down there. Well, this does happen. Um, you might have, you know, maybe there's some hills over here and it connects up to the mountain and there's high water inside that mountain that's seeping down through an aquifer. It's putting vertical pressure underneath the, the some kind of aquitard clay layer. So maybe this is like sand or gravel. This is clay and the clay is preventing the water from seeping out. But this, pr this is under high pressure from some elevated water in another location. Um, okay, so then we would need to add our, our um, loading, add distributed load, triangular, put this back on here, and then we have to add our constant load. I mean, adding these distributed loads is kind of a pain, but um, we have to do it when we're using piezo lines. Uh, okay, and then we can do our calculation. We will save it. This one may have a deeper surface with a lower factor of safety, and indeed it does, 0.992. And the reason is that the artesian pressure down here is causing the soil in the green layer to be weaker, right? It's got upward seepage going um, all the time through it, and so it's having a lower factor of safety. Okay, now, if we had done a water surface here instead of a piezo line, it would have included a reservoir on the right side of the levee and on the left side of the levee. That's not going to work. Right, we needed to have two different piezo lines in this case. And so that's why they have those two different options. If you only need to draw one water surface and you want that surface to be the one where pressures are calculated, just use the water table. That way you don't have to add in these distributed loads. If you have layers that have different total head references, that's where the different piezo lines can come in handy.